Hi and welcome to this video on troubleshooting GitHub Webhooks. In the previous video, we looked at a GitHub Webhooks tutorial. And in that tutorial, we used a Node.js API that logs Webhooks. So we created a GitHub Webhooks that is targeting that Node API. And whenever a change is made to our GitHub repository, the Webhook is going to be fired and our Node API is going to log a fraction of the Webhook information. Now we're going to be troubleshooting GitHub Webhooks and I've introduced a few bugs into that project. We're going to be using the Ookdex CLI to perform all our troubleshooting activities in this video. So let's get started. What do we need? What do we need to get started troubleshooting GitHub Webhooks? The first thing is a GitHub repository, definitely. So you need a, you need a GitHub repository that you're going to set up Webhooks to be fired to the API. I already have one, which is also, the one I used in the previous video is just a simple text file. It contains a simple text file. So we're just going to be editing the text in this text file to trigger the push event on our repository so that webhooks can be fired. Next, we where's the list? We also need Node.js installed on our system. This demo project, the demo API that I'm using is written in Node.js, as you can see. So you need Node.js installed on your system. If you have a local API running that you want to follow along with, you can simply do that. But I have, like I said earlier, I have introduced some errors into this Node.js project so that we can debug some errors on the API. Also, we need a publicly accessible URL that we'll be doing with the Ookdeck uh, CLI. We'll be using the Ookdeck CLI to get ourselves a publicly accessible URL that our webhooks can target. And definitely we need a text editor, which is what I'm writing right now, or rather what you're looking at right now, which is Visual Studio Code. So to begin, let us generate our publicly accessible URL. The server has two endpoints, which is a log webhook URL, a log GitHub webhook rather, and another endpoint, which is fetch webhook logs. That is the endpoint that fetches our logs when they are registered in the database. So let's begin. Um, I'm going to go back to the command line. I have the server running here, localhost port 1337. So I'm just going to copy the port. Then on another terminal, I'm going to type ookdeck. Listen. And set the port. So ookdeck listen port 1337, which is the port on which our API is running. We're currently using a guest account, which I assume if you don't have your ookdeck, ookdeck session logged in, you will be using, or you are just using ookdeck CLI for the first time, you're going to get a guest account. So we are right now in the interactive prompt that the Ookdex CLI takes us into when we're about to create a publicly accessible URL. And the first question says, what should be our new source label? I'm just going to type GitHub. The path that the webhooks should be forwarded to, we want it to be forwarded to the path that logs the webhook, which is log GitHub webhook. Connection label, I'm just going to say my GitHub API. And as you can see, we get a login URL for our guest account and we get our webhook URL. So copy this webhook URL as we'll be using that to create our webhook on GitHub. But first, let's get this login URL and just load it in our browser to make sure that we have an authenticated session. So here on Ookdeck, we have our guest session running and waiting for connections. The next thing we're going to do is to use our webhook URL, which is here on the CLI session for the Ookdeck CLI. We're going to use our webhook URL to create a webhook on GitHub. So I'm just going to copy the webhook URL and go to my GitHub project. GitHub webhooks are created under the settings section. You see the webhooks link on the sidebar here. I can click on add webhook to create a new webhook. So the most important item here is the webhook URL, which will go into the payload URL. And I'm going to set the content type to be application JSON. I'm going to set a secret of A, B, C, D. One, two, three. You definitely want to set a stronger one in production. And I'm just going to leave the default and subscribe for only the push event. And we'll click add webhook. Now this should immediately fire a ping event to our API endpoint. Immediately you create a new webhook, you get a ping event. So GitHub sends you a ping event to ensure that everything works fine. Now as you can see here on our CLI, we're getting a 401 error. We're receiving our webhooks, that's why we're getting this entry. So we are confirming that our webhooks are delivered successfully, but we're getting a 401 error, which is an unauthorized error, meaning that there's an authentication failure on this endpoint. 
So let's check that out. To do that, we're going to copy the event URL for this particular webhook event and go into our browser. We're going to paste it. So we're here. Let's see what's going on. Here we are on the event page. Uh, as you can see, we got a 401. We have the headers been delivered. It's a ping event as expected. Now if we scroll down under the attempt section, we can click on this badge, this red badge, and be able to see the response from our server here on the right hand side. So here we get a message from our server that says that the signature that is expected did not match, or rather the signature that was computed from the load did not match what was expected. What is expected that um, this is the signature that GitHub sent to us. This is the one that was computed and the one that was computed did not match the one that GitHub sent to us in this X hub signature 256 header. So what could be causing that? Let's go into our code and make sure that everything looks fine. On our server, the logic for the validation for the payload validation is in this middleware, this validate payload middleware. And we are looking at post requests because GitHub webhooks are sent as post requests. So here we know that we are not, this request is actually coming from GitHub. So we're not in doubt that someone might be spoofing requests to our endpoint. But let's scroll up here where the values are defined because in this code, we can see that some variables are defined, the hash algorithm, the header, and the secret. So let's check out these three variables and see their values and make sure that their value matches what it's supposed to be. So we know that the signature header name is xop signature 256. We know that the algorithm is SHA256. But as you can see, this is supposed to be the API secret. And when we were creating our GitHub webhook, we gave it a secret of ABCD1234, I think. So this is wrong. This is one of the errors I introduced into the system. So what we're going to do is correct this ABCD1234. Just going to save this. Then go back to the CLI where the server is running. I'm going to shut down the server and boot it up once again so that the changes can kick in. Good. Now that we have the server running, we can trigger another push event to GitHub to make sure that everything is fine. But because we're using the UGDEX CLI, I can simply just go to the event page and click on the retry button. So I'm just going to retry this event and see what we get. So our event is queued for retry. Let's visit our CLI to see if we have a new entry. I think we should. We're still getting 401. So I think the secret that was provided was ABCD123. So let's change it to ABCD123 and see what happens. Just going to say that, save that ABCD123. Now the problem with GitHub, or one thing you need to know about GitHub webhooks is that when you click to check the um api secret once again you you can't see it again you can only change it so the first time you're creating it make sure that you note it somewhere make sure that you keep it somewhere safe because github will not allow you to check it again so i'm updating this to abcd123 and uh, i'm going to kill the server once again let's kill the server restart the server and go back to my event page and we try the event Okay, let's see what happens. Go to the page. And yeah, we've been able to clear our 401 error. We've been able to clear our 401 error. And now we're getting a 404 error. We're getting a 404 error. So this endpoint cannot be found by the GitHub webhook. But at least we've been able to clear 401. So we've been able to fix our authentication error. So how do we figure this out? Copy the event page for this and go to the browser let's load that in the browser I'm just going to load it on the same page as the previous event load that let's see what comes up okay so we scroll down well actually it's the same event page it just has different attempts so you can see the three attempts that we've made so far the first the, we first had a 401 then we had another 401 then we had 404 so now with the 404, you can also click on that to see what the server returns. Here on the right hand side, we have an error, definitely, and it says cannot 
post to this endpoint so it can't find a post endpoint that says slash log github webhook that can be simply uh fixed by checking if that endpoint exists in the first place so we scroll up here we see we have a log github web who there's a key missing <laughs> There is a key missing. This is the second error I introduced into the system just to describe how we can debug webhooks with the UDEX CLI. So, 404 errors, not found endpoints. This endpoint is not matching what we supplied to GitHub. So, I'm just going to fix this error by adding the K. Let me, yeah, K lowercase. Fix that. After we start my server, I need to get a node mon on this. Okay, so I'm just going to restart my server. Once server is back up, then I can simply go and retry the event. So let's go back to the event page and retry. Click on retry, queued for retry, and it's retrying. You can see the attempt here, it's loading, it's loading. So we don't even really need to go back to the CLI to check if something happened. And good, we have 201, we have 201 meaning an entity or an item has been created on our server. When I click that, we can see the server response here on the right hand side that says webhook event successfully logged. And we go to our CLI session and go to where the UGDEX CLI is running. We now see an entry for 201 successful webhook logged. To confirm that our webhook was logged, we can visit the endpoint, that's the other endpoint that shows us our webhooks. Oh, gotta that we can use to fetch the log from the app database from local host colon 1337 forward slash fetch webhooks log. I have two forward slash there. So let's see. Yeah, so we have our first entry here. This is a test entry, so just ignore that. We have our first entry here. Let's trigger another. Let's let's trigger a push event to our repo to generate another log so here i'm in the project no there's not this not the project um nope let me just go out of here and see the github yeah so this is the this is the github project this is the api project so github webhooks practice like i said it only contains a readme file so let's edit that readme file I'm just going to add some more text. So I'm going to go into the insert mode and say adding more text. Let's save that. Let's commit the changes. Good. Now that our code has been committed to the repository, we would definitely notice another webhook entry. Let me go back to the CLI. Yep, as you can see, the webhook a webhook was fired to our endpoint, and we have another entry giving us a 201 status indicating that we have a new entry in our application. And we can confirm this by simply going to our browser and reloading the endpoint for fetching the webhook logs. And you, as you can see, we have the new entry. This one has a timestamp because it's an actual push and not the ping event that GitHub sends us. So, as you can see, we've been able to debug a few common issues with github webhooks using the ugdex cli so that's it for our github webhooks troubleshooting section if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like or a comment and subscribe to our channel for more videos on github webhooks and webhooks in general happy coding